So let's talk about the chemoreceptor reflex. The way it works is almost exactly like the baroreceptor reflex. The only difference is the receptor, really. So what are chemoreceptors, what are they, what are they um, measuring in the blood? Gases, pH. Different chemicals. Yeah, chemicals. So big, really pH is the big thing here. How acidic or basic is our blood, right? So um, let's talk about this for a minute. So if I have a low pH, what does that mean? as far as CO2 levels? We have a high amount of CO2. High amount of CO2, so low pH means acidic, right? And acidic, CO2, if we go back to the bicarbonate buffer system from 264, CO2 causes our blood to be more acidic. Okay. So, what could our, how does our heart have anything to do with making our blood less acidic? Pumps faster. Yeah. Pump gets more CO2 into the lungs and so that we can breathe it out faster and keeps the hydrogen inside. Good, exactly, exactly. So if our blood's moving slowly, you know, it's going past our tissues, right? Tissues are gonna be dumping off CO2 into our blood and then it's gotta go back to the lungs to be, for us to breathe it off. So if our blood's moving slowly, that CO2 is gonna build up more in the blood. Whereas if it's moving a little bit quicker, more pressure through there, CO2 is gonna get dumped off and then get carried away faster to breathe it off. So, if we have a low pH, do we want to increase, or so if we have a low pH, do we want a sympathetic or a parasympathetic response? Sympathetic. Sympathetic, right? Speed up heart rate, speed up blood pressure, pump that blood a little faster, breathe off our CO2. So, let's say I've got a high pH. So again, chemoreceptors, same thing, they're in the aortic arch and in the carotid. So my chemoreceptors detect a high pH. So they send the signal to the medulla. What does it do from there? It's going to drop heart rate. Yeah, so the medulla is going to cause a what type of response? Parasympathetic response. It's going to release what on the heart? Uh, it's epinephrine. No, parasympathetic. Potassium. Oh. So it's going to release acetylcholine, which is going to open up potassium channels, slow down heart rate. <laughs> if our pH is low, chemoreceptors sense they just well they don't they just measure they don't really sense anything off they just measure send a signal to the medulla saying this is how much we have and what does the medulla do? Sympathetic response causes sympathetic response. So our pH is low. We have too much CO two. So we have a sympathetic response. We release epinephrine onto the heart, open up calcium channels, speed up heart rate, and force a contraction. And then we send the signal to the veins to constrict. So what's the adrenal medullary mechanism? I just talked about use the during exercise and emergencies. But I don't know. So really what it is, is any time we get that um, sympathetic stimulation, that general sympathetic stimulation, the medulla, so along with, we talked about how it's going to do, you know, epinephrine and everything to those nerves. At the same time, we're going to send a signal to the adrenal medulla to release the epinephrine and norepinephrine hormone. And they're also going to cause it. So really, that's going to be going on at the same time as the baroreceptor and chemoreceptor reflexes are. Once medulla says, "Okay, we need to do, we need to have sympathetic stimulation," it's just going to send out a big stimulation to everything sympathetic that it has control over, essentially. That makes sense. What is the central nervous system ischemic response? What does ischemia mean? Something's like a loss of oxygen. Yeah. It's yeah, we're, we're, we don't have enough blood supply, so we don't have enough oxygen. Um, last chapter, you talked about, you know, MI, heart attack. Mm -hmm. 
so the heart will first become ischemic, starving for oxygen, right? Um, or, and really, so hypoxia means not enough oxygen. Ischemia is kind of like focused on the tissue, really just not enough blood flow, which also means there's not enough oxygen. Um, so ischemia leads to infarct or death, right? So central nervous system, if that dies, we're done for, right? I mean, you can't live without it. your brain and spinal cords. It doesn't happen. So when the central nervous system becomes ischemic, so it you know recognizes, hey, I'm not getting enough oxygen here. Things are really bad. It kicks in this response as a last its effort to try to get enough oxygen to stay alive. So basically when the central nervous system realizes there's not enough oxygen, not enough blood flow, it sends out this huge sympathetic response. And so the entire body is going to be basically forgetting about all the other organs and trying to sh shunt blood towards the brain. Um, in my profession we would call this like decompensated shock. Everything is focused on trying to keep the brain alive and they're, they're circling the drain right now. Make sense? As Brother Holly would say, one foot in the grave and the other on a slippery banana peel. <laughs> Just leaving, just waiting to get to irreversible shock. Yep. That makes sense. So the brain starving says, hey, I gotta stay alive. And he throws in just a Hail Mary sympathetic response to try to stay alive. So you get your heart rate's gonna speed up, you get your vasoconstriction, all that stuff. Whatever's left that can work is gonna be focused on keeping the brain alive. <laughs> 